Hi, this is Jessica DeMassa, and I'm here at Health Data Palooza. I'm here with Len Devolio. He is the co-founder and CEO of SIFT. So tell me what SIFT is and what you guys do. Sure, so what SIFT does is it helps healthcare organizations use all of their data to match patients to the very specific interventions they're likely to benefit from. Okay, break so, that down for yeah, I'll give you a very specific <laughs> example. So uh, we tend to work with uh, populations that are older and sicker where um, there's, a, there's a lot of value in getting to these people before they end up in the hospital. Okay. And so if we can help a health plan, for example, identify an older person that's likely to fall down mm -hmm. uh, in the next couple weeks, and they can get to that person and deliver a false prevention program, then we help keep people out of the hospital in their home healthy longer. And uh, because health plans are incented to keep people healthy, sure. uh, financially it pays for them to be able to sort of cut things off before they get on hand. All right, talk to me a little bit about what data you're looking at. So what data are you looking at in order to like figure out that somebody is more likely to experience a fall? Sure. So um, all health plans have traditional claims data, as mm -hmm. we know, um, but it's a very narrow view into what's happening. It's just sort of a financial transaction. They also have really rich data related to um, care management that they deliver, and so they capture this in electronic health records. Uh, sometimes we have device data, so in-home medication adherence devices, pi okay. pill boxes, scales. Uh, we've been able to use continuous glucose monitor data. Even, you'd be surprised, but even uh, call center transcripts oftentimes have really rich nuggets of information that would indicate that a, a patient or a member of their family is concerned uh, they've either ordered equipment or they're okay. uh, experiencing something in the home. And so all of this together paints a much richer picture of, of what's going on in a person's life. Mm -hmm. And we can use all of that to get the right care to the right people sooner. Okay. So I know, I mean, we all kind of want this like anticipatory, like someone to step in and like help us before we get hurt or before we get sicker. So it's like, I mean, I guess like, what kind of barrier are you seeing amongst like either with the health plans that you're working with or the hospital systems that you're working with in terms of getting this data and like how are you guys getting past that because I know people are reluctant to let go of the control over their data so I so first in order to get someone to let go of control of their data you have to present a really compelling reason. Mm -hmm. And so I think what's traditionally been the barrier is that uh, the way that most of healthcare is paid for is in a fee-for-service model. So between you know, 90 and 95% of healthcare today, you get paid when you deliver care to somebody. So there isn't a ton of incentive to get out ahead of that or to share your data to do so. Health plans, particularly Medicaid and Medicare health plans, they get a fixed amount of money to keep people healthy. And so yeah. there's a really good business case to share data with an organization like mine that can help them get the right care to the right people sooner. And so um, there's been a lot of talk about privacy and data sharing and what a huge issue it is. And it is, but it comes back to economics. And, and if you can fight find the right kinds of organizations and make the right business case, people are willing to share data. How much do you think, like, I guess, health plans need to innovate? I mean, outside of Medicare and Medicaid that are, are compensated in that way. I mean, in terms of, like, you know, true innovation and transformation of the way data is used in healthcare, it's like, does that really go back to the way that we're financing our care? Yeah, 100%. So we have the world's brightest uh, clinicians. We have the, the most cutting edge and expensive equipment. Uh, and yet we're probably 20 years behind other industries uh, when it comes to using our data effectively. Effectively. And so, there, in my opinion, there isn't a part of healthcare that couldn't benefit from using their data more effectively. Um, but with that much talent and that many intelligent people, you have to ask, well, what's the reason? Why are we so far behind? Why are electronic health records these legacy systems that only frustrate doctors and add overhead and don't make people healthier? And it's because the economics of healthcare have always incented volume and complexity. And so if the economics shift toward keeping people healthy, then all of the systems have to evolve to keep people healthy and we'll use our data more effectively to do so. We focus on Medicaid and Medicare plans because they have incentive, right. but our goal in doing so is if we can make Make them wildly successful, then others will see this value-based model as, jump on it. as a more attractive financial model, and we can grow that 5% of value-based care to 10 and then to 20, and, and that, that's why we're here, right, to, to shift the incentive toward keeping people healthy, which in, in my uh, opinion, and, and not just my own, is probably the number one reason um, why health has been so ineffective, healthcare has been so ineffective in the U.S. So, Len, last question for you. So, we've been asking people, you know, about their WTF health moment, which is yeah. that, but it's also what's the future? So, what's what's the future? Do you think for this? I mean, are we going to, you know, three, five years, two years from now, are we going to have this this kind of transformation in terms of the model toward this more value-based care? What do you think? 
I mean, I really hope so. I mean, that's what we're working on. <laughs> uh, I think the future of, of healthcare is uh, a move from reactive to proactive. Okay. And I think you'll see this in every, I hope we'll see this in every sector of healthcare. Um, we're seeing it now early in the Medicaid populations and the Medicare populations because the incentives are there. Mm -hmm. That's the irony, right? We have these beautiful steel and glass hospitals uh, that really represent our image of healthcare, and yet, they're barely using their data compared to this other image we have of government-sponsored healthcare and how bureaucratic and stodgy that must be. But I can tell you, having spent 15 years in the field doing this work, that's where we're seeing the innovation. Yeah. And so what's, what's the reason? It's because the incentive is there and they're investing in devices in the home and monitoring and telehealth. And so I, I think that's the future, is moving from waiting until something terrible happens to getting out ahead of it. And that obviously involves families and patients more. Um, we are sort of served healthcare when we need it, I would love to see us uh, actually uh, focused on health uh, as more of a continuum. Len, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. It was a pleasure to talk to you. If you want to find out more about CIFT. CYFT.com. There you go. Yep. I'm Jessica DeMassa at Health Data Palooza. Thanks for joining us.